a thread by soul war. The lying will continue until the polarizing break shatters one of the dual realities. Reality one, America is a shining beacon of liberty. Reality two, America as founded is a lie that must end. Democrats and their mainstream media are doing everything within their power to divide us. What I've called the polarizing break is upon us. I discuss it here in this video. We are in the final stages of that event. It will complete on November 4th, the day after President Trump is reelected and his presidency reaffirmed with a powerful mandate. The video that Brent is talking about is hashtag Americana rising. The polarizing break has begun. Link within this thread. I predict that from April 4th to around April, May of 2021, you will see one of these two disparate realities implode, utterly destroying itself. Think of America as one building, where e pluribus unum was the order of the day. Then Marxism rears its ugly head, sowing discord. Under the subtle influences of foreign money, and the slow march of stealth Marxists through our institutions, one America has slowly been turning into two Americas. Through control of our courts, education, and the media, culture, a percentage of our population are now demanding radical change. They detest and have been conditioned to see America's founding and history as shameful and evil, so they have distanced themselves from what I call Americana, the celebration and boosting of things traditionally American to demand fundamental changes to our nation. Over a period of eight decades, the America building has slowly morphed into two Americas, one which upholds and honors the founding as a positive and one that reviles it and sees America as a negative. Foreign dollars buying influence through our politicians in D.C. have assisted in this as well. After Trump won in 2016, it's like someone threw the crazy switch on the Democrats. What Scott Adams has called two movies on one screen is now readily apparent to anyone with eyes. Have you caught yourself saying, these people are living on another planet? It's because they are. They are literally living in another building or reality from us. Notice I didn't label those buildings left and right. There are millions of Democrats and folks on the left who are not Marxist communists, who are just as appalled as you are at what's happening. So I've been describing how we got here, the polarizing. Before I describe the polarizing break, and what that will look like, let me cover what I saw via live stream last night in Portland, Oregon, Comunista Central, USA. It was day 70 whatever, and tonight the cops struck back. Saturday night into Sunday morning was a typical night that's been going on for about two weeks since the feds stopped coming out to play yay. Antifa did considerable vandalism and arson damage to the East Precinct, before police responded at about 1 a.m. Tonight, they didn't wait so long. As Antifa gathered to start their nightly antics, they suddenly realized there were a lot of state police gathered on a dark street already waiting for them. The moment Antifa started their first illegal fire, the cops moved in. Antifa was outraged. Hashtag ambush. The state police have been driving Antifa about one and one half miles from the precinct when they push, which means Antifa has to walk that distance all the way back if they want a round two as police quickly depart and ride back on trucks and in vans. Now Antifa is pushed early. <gasps> they mad as cops pass their one fire of the night. Antifa plays the Star Wars Imperial March song because, 
as Nancy Pelosi said, preventing arson, loosen, looting, vandalism, and assault are clearly the tactics of Emperor Trump in his mad bid to restore the rule of law. Several Antifa are so incensed at having their fun spoiled, threw brazenly throw, then, br then brazenly throw objects at the state police from close proximity and are immediately dogpiled and arrested as the mob screams and hurls invective at them. Clearly pushing Antifa this early, 10 p.m. will prevent vandalism. Tonight's streamer is Antifa journalist Adam Costello, who is a true believer. He's a very good live streamer, which is why I'm using him to make this point. He is living in the Marxist building. He films his comrades committing crimes every night without batting an eye. What makes Adam mad? Unmarked police vehicles. No fair. Gestapo tactics. I'm not kidding either. This is Adam in his own words. Unmarked cars and plainclothes detectives have been around since the 1900s. Try telling Adam that. You won't be able to reach him. They block traffic. A crime. They set illegal fires. A crime. They steal private property to build barricades. A crime. They assault motor motorists and passersby and police. A crime. But by God, an unmarked police car is the bridge too far. Adam is lost to us for now. The feds tried going out and defending the Mark O. Hatfield Federal Courthouse and tried to make arrests as a mob of thousands screamed at them, pelted them with bottles and commercial grade fireworks. Arresting ID suspects later when alone made sense, except in DC, which is why the Democrats ran to Antifa's aid to put a stop to it. Governor Brown and Mayor Wheeler made a deal with Trump to keep the feds in the courthouse, and so far it's worked. But this leaves Antifa unmoored from downtown Portland now. They love conflict. So now they're moving on. The state police are adapting to Antifa's moves. Antifa first tried to go into outlying towns to harass regular Americans. Any regular American is unwoke and called a proud boy or Nazi scum. You, your unwoke status makes you an immediate target. Out of your house, Nazi scum, that sort of thing. After a few fist fights and subsequent injuries to their goon squads by both local PDs and homeowners, Antifa elected to go back and attack the Portland P Police Bureau as they did before they focused on the courthouse in the early weeks of the riots. But now the state police are there. Antifa is a red pill in black sneakers. President Trump couldn't arrange for better optics for him to destroy any and all goodwill towards the left's agendas and causes than what these fired up goombas are doing. And they think they're winning. To cap it all off, here's mom voice. Link in the description. Absolute must listen. You must vote for Trump. The power of mom voice compels you. Droning statistics at midnight. Guaranteed to create Marxist converts, right? Oh my God, look at these people. Okay, sorry. Oh, for day, oh, for the days of their wonderful photo ops at the courthouse, wall of moms and vets, ma oppression, and street theater reigned. President Trump has finessed an outcome where the voters of Oregon get an eye and earful of what the politicians they voted into office have created, enabled, as the siege of the federal courthouse ended. How many red pills since that began? Okay, back to the polarizing break. From November 4th, the day after election day onward, you will witness the building reality of one of these disparate, polarized worlds utterly implode and collapse. It will be the one that strayed furthest from objective reality, or the universe as it is, November 4th. By, November, by February to May 2021, this Marxist building will be doing, well, it'll be gone. As the reality they denied crashes in on them, Relentlessly, as the bubbles and buffers they counted on to shield them pop and shatter. 
there will be no escaping the reality that will begin to dominate moving forward. The radical left will ratchet up the crazy and mayhem until around May at a level that will shock you. President Trump will unleash a carefully prepared response that will also shock you with relief. The incorrigible and demonic are all known elements now by name. When Carlos Osuita Brian Cates and I tell you the radical left isn't coming back from this. We mean it. Their movie screen is going to catch fire. I've said this before. For the violent and destructive, nothing. Let them burn. For those misled and lied to, we've got work to do. Stay defensive. Don't engage. When their world is imploding, Save who you can without stupidly risking yourself. When this phase of madness has passed, remember, we're going to have to live together again in one building, one nation, one people, Americans again. Except me. Stay over there, off my lawn. I'll love America and you just be fine right over there. Rock on, America! The best is yet to come.